How's it going? Charles Botenston here. Today we're going to be talking about, obviously, not only a market report that is obviously conflicting between a lot of things. Obviously, jobs report is very bullish. You also have a lot of people that are talking about home pricing going up. You have a lot of people talking about they're entering the marketplace, the inventory levels, rent pricing. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of factors and there's a lot of things that people are saying, which is conflicting reports and nobody's really actually talking about the numbers. They're just talking about feelings and what they think is going to happen in the future, which is relevant. But you also have to look at not only the leading indicators, you have to look at the lagging indicators. So the lagging indicators essentially are what we're going to be talking about today. So this is going to be the February market report for Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Sorry, Bronx and Staten Island. You guys aren't getting any love. You got to go somewhere else to get those. Essentially in Manhattan. So Manhattan, we're going to be talking about on all of them, the pricing, new homes, and rental pricing, and then obviously a little bit more behind each. So first of all, the fourth consecutive quarter that pricing has dropped in Manhattan. And the reason being is that a massive influx of homes came onto the marketplace. So essentially, just psychologically, this is what happened is that a lot of sellers approached us and other agents. And I don't know why they would work with other agents, of course, but they approached other agents and they said, hey, listen, for the last seven years, it's been going up. I saw what my neighbor sold at and I want you to sell at the exact same price. Or for us, we get a lot of referrals within the building. So they say, hey, listen, you did really good on 20D. We are 17. A and we want you to get the exact same price per square foot as you did for them for us. The thing is that really came to a head last year and essentially massive amounts of inventory levels, 15% year over year increase for the last month as opposed to 2018, which is not good. So in other words, as the inventory levels go up, so in other words, they get bullish, sellers get bullish, owners get bullish, they put their home on the market at the price that they think that they can get. Unfortunately, there's too many homes, there's not enough demand and price goes down again fourth consecutive quarter it was down three percent the upper west side saw the lowest recorded sales since the financial crisis which is not good because the upper west side between the upper west side and the upper east side the upper east side has a ridiculous amount of inventory right now just a probably eight months of so there's something that they they call the normal market cycle which is about six months okay anything below six months you, it's the absorption rate is the technical term is that the absorption rate if all the buyers bought right now how long would it take to absorb all of the homes if it's under six months it's a seller's marketplace if it's above six months it's a buyer's marketplace and then it reaches a point where it's actually a recession so right now we're not there it's a normalized marketplace but in each sub market it's a little bit different this is why you have to go with a professional right now so fourth consecutive quarter drop down three percent the upper west side saw the lowest recorded sales which which is not good. So in other words, the amount of homes on the market and the amount of transactions that are happening, there's a big disconnect. Home pricing with price cuts increased 5%. So the amount of homes on the market that are decreasing their home, or is what we say a price improvement, increased 5%, which is not good. Rents is a very good indicator that actually increased seven, or I'm sorry, 2%. And the amount of concessions, so concessions means lower amount of application fees, maybe free months, they pay for the broker, things like that, is there's not as many concessions. So the rental market is actually quite strong. We we're putting on three homes within the next two months, probably month and a half. And I just said, listen, if you don't want this to sit, make sure that it's going to be put up as a no fee. So that's Manhattan. Sales pricing is down 3%. The new homes on the market is up 15%. Right, rental pricing is up 2%. Obviously, that's kind of in terms you know, the, the rental pricing feeds into the sales. And obviously within the sales market, you have the, the studios that buy one bedrooms, one bedrooms that buy two bedrooms, two bedrooms that buy three bedrooms. But it all really starts at the top and the luxury marketplace is decimated right now. There's, there's so much inventory. They have a plethora of options that they could choose from. And moving on to Brooklyn. So Brooklyn in general, the sales pricing is up 3%. So that's a little bit different. And South Brooklyn actually rose the most most at 6%. So to have Brooklyn pricing increase is very interesting because a lot of people moved out to Brooklyn. It pushed pricing way, way, way up. And it kind of just inflated to a point where it wasn't really sustainable. And then we saw kind of a correction the last couple of months and for it to actually go up 3%, very interesting. But here's the kicker is that 22% increase in the amount of inventory coming on the market.
market, there is that's a lot. If you're increasing the amount of homes that come onto the market, obviously that's going to affect the amount of not only how long it's going to be on the days on the market, but the the price that they're going to get. The rental pricing, just like Manhattan, increased two percent. So obviously the L train is in flux right now. Uh, I know Governor Cuomo has talked about uh, a, a workaround where they don't need to shut it down completely, which means that they kind of increased the Williamsburg pricing. It was decreasing for a while because a lot of people knew they had to take a ferry, a taxi, bike, or some other way to get to Manhattan, okay? Because obviously the L train shutdown was gonna be for 18 months. Knowing the MTA, they were not gonna hit that target point. It was probably gonna be two, two and a half, three years, okay? Which is not, you have a, you have a vital heartbeat train line in the L train shut down for 18 months. It's not good for home pricing, but obviously they're gonna do a workaround. And they actually, uh, this is an interesting side note, is it actually came from, I think, engineers and architects at NYU and somewhere else where they said, listen, you can actually, this all happened from Sandy is that obviously the amount of salt water rushed in that's not good for tracks and electrical work. So they, they were just doing like minor repairs every once in a while, but they needed to do a complete shutdown. So Brooklyn is actually pretty stable right now. Manhattan, it's a little, it's a little, you know, it, it's really comes down to the sub markets moving on to Queens is that Queens has always been solid. Queens just has been that, that silent child in New York City that has just been just rising. And the reason being is that they, they noticed that Brooklyn was completely inflated where it was so high priced that people were moving back into Manhattan because they got better deals. That's crazy that people were moving from Brooklyn back into Manhattan because obviously Park Slope, uh, Borum Hill, Cobble, Borum, like Brooklyn Heights, all, all that entire area was just inflating. And obviously they weren't really building many structures around there that has changed a little bit. But within Queens, sales pricing increased 5%. Here's the kicker. I already talked about it in Brooklyn, is that the amount of new homes that came on the market is up 31%, 31%. I know that HQ2 from Amazon is going out to Long Island City. However, that's a lot of homes getting put on the marketplace. And honestly, when is HQ2 gonna be opening up where you know tens of thousands of jobs are gonna be created, but are they all gonna be working there? Are they gonna be commuting in from Long Island, coming in from West Coast, or coming in from Manhattan? Obviously, it's not gonna be all Long Island City. And the reason that Queens had such an impact on the amount of homes coming on the marketplace, if you take the Long Island Railroad and you're going out and you look north from the Long Island Railroad train, you just see just tremendous amounts of size skyscrapers and cranes everywhere. And the reason being is that land was cheap. So they overdeveloped in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg especially, then they started moving out with, into further into Brooklyn, then they couldn't really get the pricing. So then developers moved to Queens, land was cheap, developing was cheap, and obviously these are massive structures. Hundreds of units, thousand, hundreds of uh, sales units and thousands of rental units came on the market, so obviously it's showing here. Rental pricing has increased 3%. I think this is because there's a lot more luxury buildings out there. So in other words, doorman with amenities and rooftops and pools and gyms and lounges and things like that. So obviously the rental pricing is, is being a little bit inflated by these beautiful brand new building. But in general, it's a stable marketplace. I was very, very worried coming into this year. I don't know if you saw my other videos from last year, but essentially I talked about that if the amount of inventory keeps on increasing and the buyers stay kind of on the sideline and not purchasing, that we're going to, we're going to see just huge dips in price homes coming on the market. So this is the difference. I'll leave you guys with this is if you put a home on the market and it's going to be priced less than say something else, would have come on maybe in a bullish marketplace, there's gonna be no price decrease. The price overall in the marketplace may be going down, but there's no price decrease. There's a big difference. So in other words, if you put your home on the market and there's a price decrease, that means that not only are you getting less, days on the market is going up, it makes your home look very unattractive to buyers, to say the least. But if you put your home here, yes, it is lower than what you want. It's gonna sell quicker. There's gonna be no less anxiety, I should say, not no anxiety, but less anxiety anxiety and the amount of times that you have to leave your home into the cold for open houses and showings and obviously getting maybe even a bidding war. Um, I have buyers that were looking at three bedrooms and right now there's not a lot of three bedrooms available on the Upper West Side even though you know it's saying that inventory levels have increased. We went into sort of a bidding war last week and it was sort of a bidding war because we gave, gave our best and final which was below market but we're like ah, whatever. Then we didn't even put in a bid on another one where they already had the asking price. So in other words I'm bullish about this spring. 
I have, we're sitting on probably six homes we're gonna be putting on in the spring. And the reason being is that it's not the best to put it on in February, but if you wanna put it on in February, you can put it on in February, but you know, you kinda of wanna wait till the bonuses hit, school is winding down. You have a lot of people that wanna go out in a warmer climate instead of you know a colder climate. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. I'm bullish, way more bullish than I was, say a month and a half ago about the marketplace. Buyers are, they've sat on the sidelines, rates are are good and they're starting to act on the pricing so if you guys have any questions leave in the comments below as always work with a prof professional you know maybe last year when you can just have a, an orangutan put on the market and get the asking price it's totally different now you need a professional that's actually able to give you the number not buy the listing not say that my intern is going to be showing it and hosting open houses you need a professional that comes in, all right? So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Shoot me an email, charles at botenston.com. I'll come back with uh, more value in the coming days. Uh, we're gonna be working more with the seller side and potentially a little bit buyer information and, and value. But if you guys have any topics you want me to discuss, obviously include that in, into the email. Keep warm out there. Talk to you guys soon.